So Brian, tell me about this Housewives book of yours. I am obsessed with it. Um, what would you like? Like what inspired it? What inspired it? Why did you write it? You know, what was your favorite fact? I want to know everything. Mention it uh, all, as I say. Well, I, I think I might need a bit more directed guidance, but um, the idea um, of the book was I was reading um, Bachelor Nation, which is a book by Amy Kaufman. Yes, who is yes. A, yeah. Um, and I was like, why hasn't anyone done this for Housewives? Why hasn't anyone done this for Housewives? And then um, a mutual friend connected me with Amy Kaufman's book agent. And she was like, I want to do this for Housewives. And I was like, oh my God, I was thinking the same thing. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Um, so thank you, Amy Kaufman, I guess, for having the idea first. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I just kind of went into it and like I wanted to answer all the questions that I had about Housewives, all the questions I thought fans would have about Housewives. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I was trying to accomplish. Yeah, it's a really good book. I, there's stuff that I didn't even know about it. It was like, I mean, you do work with in the beginning of the book where like they got their shirts from the sky tops and yeah. all that. I was just like, so I always wondered where they came from because I thought those shirts were beautiful. And yeah, now you've got me a shopping tip on top of everything else. I mean, so. please don't buy a sky top. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> All right. I promise I won't buy one. Okay. Yes. But yeah. Um, so what got you into the, I know you got into it a little bit in the book, but for those that, um, that haven't read it yet, what got you into the housewives initially? Um, well, I was just, you know, Bravo was my channel of choice, you know, back in the day. And I was living in this like crappy basement apartment in Washington, D.C. that I was paying $350 a month for and it had free cable and by free, I mean pirated. And um, so, yeah, and that was like a, a great age of Bravo. I was obsessed with Project Runway. That's what really got me there. And so it was like Project Runway and Kathy Griffin and Rachel Zoe Project and Top Chef and like all those great shows. Um, so Bravo would just kind of be on. And one day I saw this like gorgeous God of a man on my TV screen. I was like, oh my God, who is that? I need to like learn all about this. And it was Shane Keogh, Gina Keogh's oldest son, who is still to this day, like so handsome. And yeah. And so then I like came for Shane Keogh and then I stayed for the housewives. So that's, um, how I really got into it. And then it just became, you know, more and more immersive. And then I started writing about them and then, that really took off. And so since then, I've just been along for the ride, though it is something that I love and care about very deeply. Yes, I do love your recaps. I remember it was Thank from both. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's just like the, the snark and like everything that you put into it. It's just, you put mine to shame. I got to like start getting inspiration from yours because I do the straight <laughs> recap. I do add some snark to it, but I'm, I don't hold a candle. Yours is like so much better. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I just feel like if you're just saying like, here's what happened and here's what happened and here's what happened. It's like, you know, people watch the episode. So, you know, yeah. I assume most people are watching the episode. So I'm trying to like take it and be like, here, are the th I think of it like a book report, you know, like when you're in like third grade, it's like, okay, here's what happened. And here's what I took out of it. And let's make some jokes and have a good time. Try to add to people's enjoyment of the show, because that's what, you know, recaps are really is just a way to further this thing that we love like longer than the 45 minutes it takes to watch it so that's what I'm trying to give people and I hope the book does the same thing oh it absolutely does I, I mean like I told you I'm in love with the book it's just so incredible and I am I definitely gonna put it on my favorite things list so more people read it good thank you thank you of course of course and now what is your favorite franchise of Housewives? Um, I would say that New York is probably my most favorite and that it's always delivered, but Potomac is really nipping at its heels these days, I would say. So um, I enjoyed New York a lot and they've given us some of my favorite moments, but oh, the past few seasons of Potomac have just been explosive and I'm ready for another one. So yeah. three more weeks three more weeks i'm excited oh, no, i can't wait i mean this is the time of year we're spoiled it's like you get beverly hills new york and potomac all on at once i mean it's like the olympics of housewives it is yeah and we just finished jersey and dallas so it's like all housewives all the time 
uh, I mean, all year round these days. Um, yes. Thank God. Thank yeah. God. I don't know what I would do without it. I started watching uh, a few years ago and then I haven't stopped since. And now my mom watches with me when I visit and we're both really into it. And if I'm not, uh, if I'm at my place, we take we text watch. It just become a, it's become a family affair too, so. Great. Yeah, and what are you even thinking of New York this season with um, Ebony and Leah and Ramona? I like Ebony a lot and I'm glad she's joined and I like that she's making people like Luann and Ramona think about and talk about race in a way that they probably haven't been challenged in quite some time. Um, I haven't been loving Leah. I think we're seeing a bit of terrible twos where she, you know, it's her like second season and she's feeling it and, you know, she's coming for everybody. But, um, you know, I always love the ladies of New York. I mean, you can just watch Sonia and Ramona try to fix a pool heater and like I could watch that for an hour. So I'm happy just to be around my favorite ladies. Exactly. They're like almost like, you know, the uh, Dynasty era meets slapstick comedy when they do stuff like that. I'm like reminded of that Perfect Strangers episode where C Cousin Larry and Belky were trying to fix the shower uh, faucet or something like that. And everything. <laughs> that's what it reminded me yeah. of. And then they start fighting and then they love and hate. And it's just like, oy. yeah. Oh, I love them so much. I them. Oh, I know. It's just been incredible. And this season, like you say, it's getting people thinking now that Ebony's bringing, you know, educating them. And I think she's doing an incredible job of that. Yeah, and no, we're seeing, absolutely. And we're seeing that on Beverly Hills too with Crystal and with Garcelle. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's great. I mean, and we're really seeing the opposite of that on Dallas. So <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that the, the, results of trying to diversify the cast is certainly me a mixed bag currently but i'm glad that they're doing it and i think what's great about the conversations we're seeing with garcelle and kyle and sutton and crystal are the kind of conversations that are happening you know all around america now as we're trying to deal with this new you know post george floyd uh racial reckoning and i think it's really great and i think that yeah it's uncomfortable and it's dramatic and it's hard for people to really open up and talk about but i'm glad that the housewives are opening up for for so that we can all learn from them both how to do it and certainly how not to do it exactly and i think we've definitely at least i could say my own personal experience i've definitely learned a lot from watching them and yeah. it's just i think they're doing an incredible job of it no, absolutely. So yes. thanks, Bravo, for everything you've done to help humanity. <laughs> yes, and I agree with you. I didn't give it much thought, but I definitely agree the way they handled Dallas this year was just not really good. And I do love I do love Dr. Tiffany. I love her a lot. But oh, yes, absolutely. But I mean, they kind of hung her out to dry. It's like, oh, let's just like cast some more diverse people. And then they're all going to treat her like shit. And then their family's going to come after that, her and like her medical practice and yeah, I don't know why after the way Tiffany was treated and the way Bravo and the production companies make these shows allowed her be, to be treated, why any other woman of color would want to be on these shows. Um, but hopefully that that is going to change and improve as we get better at doing these kinds of things. Yes. Now, do you think Tiffany's going to come back in season six because it's just been renewed? Oh, it has. Yeah, Deandra just announced it a couple of days ago. Interesting. I was thinking it was about to get canceled. So um, interesting. I mean, I don't know. If I was Tiffany, I wouldn't come back. So we'll see. Also, I, yeah, I wouldn't come back if Cameron was going to be on the cast or Brandy, like these people that treated me like crap. I mean, I don't know. But also, you know, I know the that being on the housewives can be quite intoxicating and addicting. So I think a lot of the ladies have a hard time leaving and I'm sure that Tiffany might feel the same way. Yeah, now do you think they're gonna give Cameron and Brandy the uh, Leanne Locken treatment and get rid of her, get rid of them? I mean, probably, I, I feel like it, it sets a bad precedent when people are rewarded with a renewal for behaving the way that these women behave. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And what about Carrie? Because she's been having so many personal issues and 
we saw her kind of break down. Do you think she's going to come back? I mean, I don't think it's a question usually of whether or not they're going to come back as much as it's a question of if they're going to be asked, asked back. back. Yeah. Um, because I firmly believe with a handful of exceptions and there are uh, only a few of them that no housewife really leaves of her own accord. Right. Um, so, I mean, we'll see what happens. And I think, you know, fans really do have an impact and Bravo does a lot of research into who people love and who people hate about, uh, and not that hating people is a bad thing. Like they would rather have someone hated on the show than someone people don't care about. So, um, and they do a lot of research into what people are saying when the shows air, like the social sentiment around these people. So, you know, all those people voicing their opinions on Twitter and such definitely has uh, cost at the end. But I think, you know, at, at the end of the day, the producers are really gonna do what they think is best for the show. And um, yeah, so we'll see what they decide. Yeah. And uh, what about Jersey? Do you watch Jersey as well? I do watch Jersey. I just recapped this season of Jersey for the first time. Yeah, this is my first time doing it too. Oh, we had our first time recapping Jersey together. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, I like that one a lot. And I think they handled a lot of, it ain't going to the same issues, but they handled a lot of different things as well with the affair and everything else. Yeah. And uh, the stuff that they were talking about during the reunion with the sexual harassment, I thought that was very interesting the way they handled that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, leave it to Jersey to bring up some big topics. Absolutely. Yeah. And what did you think about the way Teresa brought it up? Do you think it's going to impact whether or not she's going to be on the show next season? I mean, I don't think so, really. They've centered the show around Teresa so much at this point that I can't imagine them ever getting rid of her. So I think that Teresa will be just fine. Yeah, um, I, think I so mean, too. fans aren't that excited about it. So maybe she'll see what they have to say and change her mind a bit. But I don't think Bravo is going to be like, oh, we can't have Teresa back because without Teresa, I mean, I don't know that how they would have a show at this point. No, without Teresa, there is no Housewives of Jersey. So I don't think she's going yeah. anywhere. Yeah, her and Dolores are my two favorites on there just because everyone loves Dolores and Frank and everyone loves to see what Teresa's going to do next or say next. Right, yeah, I do love Dolores. I can't stand Teresa, but that's just me. <laughs> we, just all have different, we all have different opinions. Yeah, so, you know, she's... that's what makes it fun to talk about Housewives. Yeah, she's like the Erica Kane in a franchise, I think. It's like you think in a franchise and you automatically picture that. Yeah, and I think really that's the only one left. It's like Bethany left New York, uh, Vicky left OC. You know, other than Kyle and Beverly Hills, um, you know, it really is uh, Teresa's show. But even in Beverly Hills, you know, like Lisa Rinna's still in the center. And, you know, Kyle's not... Like they haven't built this whole thing around Kyle in a way that they built it around Teresa and her family and everybody else. So um, yeah, she really is. I mean, of all the women, I think that getting rid of Nini, getting rid of Vicky showed a lot of the women like nobody is safe, um, except for Teresa. I think Teresa is pretty safe. I think so <laughs> if too. If anyone is safe, Teresa's safe, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they kept her during her prison, after her prison stint, I think that unless she like goes off on a murder spree or something, she's going to be just fine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I love the new book also. Yeah, I forgot to mention just that you went into the history of soap operas too, because that's yeah. a lot of stuff I forgot about. I was raised on ABC soaps, just like our boy Andy Cohen. And myself, yes. Yes, yes. So all my children, my life to live, loving back in the day, General Hospital, all of them. So it was yeah. just just great. And I love learning the history of soap. So like, I was really happy. It was a nice surprise I you had that thrown in as well. Thank you. Yes. And you, are you planning on writing a sequel or another book as a, season, as a, a franchise moves on? Um, I think that we've gotten a, as, as much as we can for a book out of the Housewives, I think, because, you know, I don't think that the behind the scenes or the history or any of that is going to change. So I don't know that I would have enough for a whole other Housewives book. I mean, maybe there's a similar book about another reality franchise that hasn't been done yet or another show we'll see. But 
right now I'm happy to just um, be done with the housewives for the time being and figure out what's going to be next soon. Yes. And any, and are, is there a super secret project in the works or anything you can talk about that's in the works? Not really, no. I've just been, I mean, working on the book. Um, I have some ghostwriting projects that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I've just really been focused on this for the past few years. And, and now launching the book has been a lot of work. And so now that it's kind of out in the world, it's like, I need a week off and then I need to figure out uh, what I'm going to do next. So yes. yes. Yeah. Is there another reality show you like that you would love to do behind the scenes on? I mean, the all I love to do like a RuPaul's Drag Race version of the book. Um, I love Drag Race. I love um, Survivor. I think that that would be a really good, interesting book. But I mean, that's even like bigger than Housewives. So I don't know how you'd squeeze all that into a book. Um, those are probably the two best candidates I could think of off the top of my head. But um, there are a lot of other reality shows that I love that. Mm. Excuse me, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, I mean, I love Love Island, but I don't know that it's ready for a book yet. So um, yeah, and that's what was great about doing The Housewives is that there is so much history and there's so much to it at this point. So many people have studied it that there was a lot of meat to dig into, a lot of stories to be told. So I think that that's, you know, we, something needs some, some history to be interesting. And how did you get into ghostwriting? Because I know you wrote, said you've um, ghostwritten a lot of books in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Erica Jane approached me about doing her book because she um, and her agent liked my recaps and liked my voice and they knew I loved Erica. And so I worked with her. And through that, I got a ghostwriting agent. Um, and now she just kind of finds me gigs and um, I choose them based on you know, what I want to do and if they like me and if I like them. And so there's usually something going on in the background that I'm working on. It's a lot more fun and a lot less pressure than doing this, where it's like you just get to talk to one person and tell their story as opposed to talking to, you know, dozens and hundreds of people, you know, trying to put that all together. So. Yeah. And I do say I did read Erica's book a couple months ago and I loved it. It was great learning her Thank life you. story as well. Yes. So you did a great job with that. Yeah. It's being reexamined now in light of uh, everything, everything that's going, going on. on. Yeah. So, yeah. But. I mean, I hope that's good for sales, maybe? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. and one thing I like to ask people um, that I interview is tell me a fun fact about yourself. Um, I have an honorary degree from the University of Chicago in Jersey Shore Studies Ooh. Uh, because I, they, uh, University of Chicago had a Jersey Shore Studies um, conference and I was like the keynote speaker at it. This was like 10 years ago uh, when I was writing a lot about Jersey Shore. So I am, you know, I am a very lauded reality television scholar so i just want people to know that about me i love it i love it and we should collaborate sometime because we have so much in common yeah i would love it because we have so many things in common we love the same shows we recap the same shows we could do kind of like a debate one day <laughs> yeah i'm a writer i work alone <laughs> well then no i'm just kidding i'm kidding i'll just read your recap set <laughs> But my friend, it was so wonderful to speak with you. I appreciate you. And I cannot wait to talk to you again soon. You too. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.